the ins and outs of the Boston Marathon route. There's so much you probably don't know. So this week on Inside Wellesley, we sit down with marathon expert and 23-time runner Paul Clarisi, who's written a book detailing every mile of the course. You have written a book called Boston Marathon History by the Mile. Tell me a little bit about what it's about. Well, I've run Boston 23 times, and I've covered it, I still cover it for over 30 years, and just so many stories of the course. Uh, obviously, the history of the BAA and the marathon itself, but I want to put in things about each town, each city that it goes through, uh, little anecdotes, things about the statues that are there, things about landmarks. Uh, so if you're a runner, you can maybe look around, find some neat things as you're running, because it's what else you do? You run and you look. Uh, spectator, same thing. You can look around, see some some neat things you may not have noticed before, or just a fan of the sport watching it on TV. You not just with the book, but you have a long history of running in the marathon. How, remind me, how many times did you run? Twenty-three. Twenty-three yeah. times. I trained, did it, 1990. That's all I was going to do, just once. And then my family's like, right, you know. So 23 years in a row. <laughs> There were a lot of mementos along the marathon route that you had, you know, no idea uh, about until you started the research. Mm. So, what were a few of your favorites that you were really s surprised to learn about? Well, some of the things, as a runner, uh, I remember in Natick right before we come to the town line, Wellesley. Uh, there's a gentleman on the sidewalk that is always dressed up as Santa Claus. He looks just like Santa Claus. In the first year or two, I didn't see him, so I really focused to find him. There's a lot of books about the actual history of the marathon uh, or the BAA. I wanted to let people know this is about the course. So when did the book come out? Uh, last year. Okay, great. Yeah, and how's year. it been doing? Very good. I actually just found out it's going to be translated into Chinese. Wow, why Chinese? Yeah, the China market wants to actually publish it, so I have to learn Chinese now. <laughs> <laughs> Running through Wellesley, the halfway mark, first of all, what's it like getting to Wellesley knowing that you've made it halfway? And then as a runner, what's it like running through the town? Wellesley's great. Wellesley is, I remember inevitably every year when I'm running, uh, there's always people around you that you know and you get to know them. Always out of staters. And when we just cross into the town line, uh, Wellesley College campus is, is immediately there. And you can start to hear this low din of the women and the, the, the train goes on the left side of the runners. So some of the, the out of state go, oh, it must be the train coming. They go, no, that's, it's the Wellesley women. They go, what do you mean women? I go, oh, Wellesley College is this whole campus on your right. And about a quarter mile up, because you enter a Wellesley at about 12 miles, just mm -hmm. under 12-mile mark, I go, less than a half a mile, you're going to see several hundred Wellesley College women screaming at you. I go, that's the din that you're hearing getting louder. And they're like, yeah, right. And I go, no, it is. They actually date back, some people may or may not know this, to the first marathon. Um, the first Boston Marathon was 1897, and it was a runner from Harvard University. And I think some of the women knew, either knew him or wanted to support one of their own because there was a lot of New York runners. So the women have been there, they've been there every year. And most recently through social media, if you live out of state or out of town, you can actually contact the Wellesley College women and say, hey, you know, I live in Kansas and my son Joe is running, can you make a sign? And they will make a sign. So some of those signs are from, from like out of state, which I thought was, they just started doing that recently at Munger Hall, that they would do that. And I thought, that's really neat. Yeah. You imagine running from like, you know, Kansas and not knowing and looking over and going, hey, Joey's from Kansas, hey, that's me. And it's just, a, it's, a, it's a great connection that they do every year. So you mentioned that you wish that, um, when you were running it, you had a book like this. What do you hope runners or anyone who reads your book get out of it? Uh, just the fun and enjoying it. I mean, it sounds trite, but it, the biggest thing is you're running for, well, most runners, three, four, five hours, you know. Um, the elite runners, they don't even know if they know where they are sometimes when they're running so fast. But there's so many fun things about this course. In every town, it's almost like each town has their own race. 
Uh, Wellesley is second to Newton with distance. It's 4.21 miles in Wellesley. Newton has a little over five. So you're in Wellesley, the second the most mm -hmm. of the whole course. And you have all, all the different um, things to look forward to, the women at the college. The center of town, is like, it's like a, it's a bustling, awesome center of town mm -hmm. when you go through the center of Wellesley. And then the neighborhoods right after. So it's like three different sections of one town. Mm -hmm. And you get different kind of support and you get different, you know, barbecues on the yards and the family reunions. And, and if you run it more than once, you kind of start seeing the families and stuff or the barbecues. You go, oh yeah, that house, I know, they did this. And each, that's why I had each chapter is its own town and city. Okay. So you can flip ahead to, uh, hey, I want to see what looks like or Wellesley. I remember when it was really hot. 2012 was really hot. That's the one that the BA said they, if you want, you can defer it to the next year because it was so hot. I ran through Wellesley and the, the door of JP Licks was open and I was so close <laughs> to go, I'm going to get a frap because I like frap. I like their fraps. And I go, I don't think I would have. No, I would have called think, for a yeah, ride from I, there. <laughs> I think that would have been the end of your marathon I would have loved run it. that day. <laughs> yeah, but th that would have been, I need a ride. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, where can we pick up the book? Uh, it's available at Barnes and Nobles, uh, okay. the History Press uh, website, a lot of other independent stores, which is nice, and then uh, uh, book signings and things I try to do around. Uh, but it's, a, it's a lot of fun, not just because I wrote it, but it is really something. I did an event in Ashland, one of the road races last year, and this woman was running for the first time, so she bought the book Saturday at the expo. Sunday she saw me at the, at the race, because I was there again uh, at the uh, tent there, and she goes, Paul, I, I was starting to read, I got the book, I'm in my car reading it. She's all excited about the book and everything. She goes, I started to cry. Because I, I, I wrote it such, you know, that's mm -hmm. how I, I wrote the way you enjoy it. And she goes, my stepfather's in the car and joking said, you can't even get through the book. How are you going to get through the race? <laughs> but it, that's what I wanted to, people to look at it and, and just, you can flip through. Someone called it like a souvenir, which I thought, hey, that's really neat. That's a, it's, it encapsulizes the whole thing, which I thought was nice.